providing multiple constructors in your Python classes. Sometimes you need to write a Python class that provides multiple ways to construct objects. In other words, you want a class that implements multiple constructors. This kind of class comes in handy when you need to create instances using different types or numbers of arguments. Having the tools to provide multiple constructors will help you write flexible classes that can adapt to changing needs. In Python, there are several techniques and tools that you can use to construct classes, including simulating multiple constructors through optional arguments, customizing instance creation via class methods, and doing special dispatch with decorators. If you want to learn about these techniques and tools, then this course is for you. In this course, you'll learn how to simulate multiple constructors with optional arguments and type checking, write multiple constructors using the built-in class method decorator, and overload your class constructors using the single dispatch method decorator. You'll also get a look under the hood at how Python internally constructs instances of a regular class and how some standard library classes provide multiple constructors. To get the most out of this course, you should have basic knowledge of object-oriented programming and understand how to define class methods with the class method decorator. You should also have experience working with decorators in Python. As ever, RealPython has you covered if you need to learn more about these subjects, with this course covering object-oriented programming, this one covering class methods, and this one for decorators. In this course, any code you see running in the REPL will be using the BPython REPL. It offers a number of improvements over the standard REPL, such as color coding, but all of the code you see will run in the standard Python REPL, which is typically launched by typing Python in a terminal window. So now you know what's going to be covered in the course, let's get started. Instantiating classes in Python. Python supports object-oriented programming with classes that are straightforward to create and use. Python classes offer powerful features that can help you write better software. You can think of classes like blueprints for objects, and individual examples of them are known as instances. In the same way you can build several houses from a single blueprint, you can build several instances from a class. To define a class in Python, you need to use the class keyword followed by the class name. Python has a rich set of special methods that you can use in your classes. Python implicitly calls special methods to automatically execute a wide variety of operations on instances. There are special methods to make your objects iterable, provide a suitable string representation, initialize instance attributes, and many more. A pretty common special method is dunder init. This method provides what's known as the instance initializer in Python. The method's job is to initialize instance attributes with appropriate values when you instantiate a given class. In the person class, the dunder init method's first argument is called self. This argument holds the current object or instance which is passed implicitly in the method call. The argument is common to every instance method in Python. In this particular case, the second argument to dunder init is called name and will hold the person's name as a string. Note that using self to name the current object is a strong convention in Python but not a requirement. However, using another name will raise some eyebrows amongst your fellow Python developers. Once you've defined a class, you can start instantiating it. In other words, you can start creating objects of that class. To do this, you'll use a familiar syntax. Call the class using a pair of parentheses, which is the same syntax that you use to call any Python function. In Python, the class name provides what other languages such as C++ and Java call the class constructor. Calling a class, as you did with person, triggers Python's class instantiation process, which internally runs in two steps. Firstly, create a new instance of the target class, and secondly, initialize the instance with suitable instance attribute values. To continue with the example seen on screen, the value that you pass as an argument to person is internally passed to dunder init, 
and then assign to the instance attribute dot name. In this way, you initialize your person instance, John, with valid data, which you can confirm by accessing dot name. Success! John Doe is indeed his name. When you call the class to create a new instance, you need to provide as many arguments as Dunder init requires so that this method can initialize all the instance attributes that demand an initial value. Now that you understand the object initialization mechanism, you're ready to learn what Python does before it gets to this point in the instantiation process. It's time to dig into another special method called Dunder new. This method takes care of creating new instances in Python. Note that the Dunder new method is often called a class constructor in Python. However, its job is actually to create new objects from the class blueprint, so you can more accurately call it an instance creator or object creator. The Dunder new method takes the underlying class as its first argument and returns a new object. This object is typically an instance of the input class, in which case it will be handled by Dunder init when it's returned. In some cases, however, it can be an instance of a different class, and in that case, it will not be passed to Dunder init. Python's object class provides the base or default implementations of both Dunder new and Dunder init. Unlike Dunder init, you rarely need to override Dunder new in your custom classes. Most of the time, you can safely rely on the default implementation. To summarize what you've learned so far, Python's instantiation process starts when you call a class with appropriate arguments. Then the process runs through two steps, object creation with the Dunder new method and object initialization with the Dunder init method. Now that you know about this internal behavior of Python, you're ready to dive into providing multiple constructors in your classes, and that's what you'll be looking at in the next section. Defining multiple class constructors. Sometimes you'd like to write a class that allows you to construct objects using arguments of different data types, or even a different number of arguments. One way to achieve this is by providing multiple constructors in the class at hand. Each constructor will allow you to create instances of the class using a different set of arguments. Some programming languages such as C++, C Sharp and Java support what is known as function or method overloading. This feature allows you to provide multiple class constructors because it enables you to create multiple functions or methods with the same name and different implementations. Method overloading means that depending on how you call the method at hand, the language will select the appropriate implementation to run, so your method can perform different tasks according to the context of the call. Unfortunately, Python doesn't support function overloading directly. Python classes keep method names in an internal dictionary called dunderdict, which holds the class namespace. Like any Python dictionary, dunderdict can't have repeated keys, so you can't have multiple methods with the same name in a given class. If you try to do so, then Python will only remember the last implementation of the method at hand. Here you can see an example demonstrating this. In this example, you create greeter as a Python class with two methods. Both methods have the same name, but they have slightly different implementations. To learn what happens when two methods have the same name, save your class into a greet.py file in your working directory and run the following code in an interactive session. In this example, you call say hello on greeter, which is an instance of the greeter class. You get hello Pythonista instead of hello world on your screen, which confirms that the second implementation of the method prevails over the first one. This line of code inspects the contents of Dunderdict, uncovering that the method's name, say hello, appears only once in the class namespace. This is consistent with how dictionaries work in Python. Something similar occurs with functions in a Python module and an interactive session. The last implementation of several functions with the same name prevails over the rest of the implementations. You define two functions with the same name, say hello, in the same interpreter session. 
As you can see when you call the function, the second definition overwrites the first one, confirming that the last function definition prevails. Another technique that some programming languages use to provide multiple ways to call a method or function is multiple dispatch. With this technique, you can write several different implementations of the same method or function and dynamically dispatch the desired implementation according to the type or other characteristics of the arguments that are used in the call. You can use a couple of tools from the standard library to pull this technique into your Python code. Python is a fairly flexible and feature-rich language and provides a couple of ways to implement multiple constructors and make your classes more flexible. In the next section, you'll simulate multiple constructors by passing optional arguments and by checking the argument types to determine different behaviours in your instance initialisers. Simulating multiple class constructors a pretty useful technique for simulating multiple constructors in a Python class is to provide dunder init with optional arguments using default argument values. This way you can call the class constructor in different ways and get a different behaviour each time. Another strategy is to check the data type of the arguments to dunder init to provide different behaviours depending on the concrete data type that you pass in the call. This technique allows you to simulate multiple constructors in a class. You'll learn the basics of how to simulate multiple ways to construct objects by providing appropriate default values for the arguments of dunder init method and also by checking the data type of the arguments to this method. Both approaches require only one implementation of dunder init and in the next section you'll look at how to use optional argument values to achieve this technique. Using optional argument values in dunder init. An elegant and Pythonic way to simulate multiple constructors is to implement a dunder init method with optional arguments. You can do this by specifying appropriate default argument values. You can also provide optional arguments in your functions and methods using an undefined number of positional arguments or an undefined number of keyword arguments. Check out using Python optional arguments when defining functions for more details on these options. Let's say you need to code a factory class called Cumulative Power Factory. This class will create callable objects that compute specific powers using a stream of numbers as input. You also need your class to track the total sum of consecutive powers. Finally, your class should accept an argument holding an initial value for the sum of powers. Go ahead and create a power.py file in your current directory. Then add the following code to implement Cumulative Power Factory. The initializer of Cumulative Power Factory takes two optional arguments, exponent and start. The first argument holds the exponent that you'll use to compute a series of powers. It defaults to 2, which is a commonly used value when it comes to computing powers. The star or asterisk symbol after exponent means that start is a keyword only argument. To pass a value to a keyword only argument, you need to use the argument's name explicitly. In other words, to set arg to value, you need to explicitly type arg equals value. The start argument holds the initial value to compute the cumulative sum of powers. It defaults to zero, which is the appropriate value for those cases in which you don't have a previously computed value to initialize the cumulative sum. The special method dunder call turns the instances of cumulative power factory into callable objects. In other words, you can call the instances of cumulative power factory like you call any regular function. Inside dunder call, you first compute the power of base raised to exponent. Then you add the resulting value to the current value of total. Finally, you return the computed power. To give this class a try, open a Python interactive session in the directory containing power.py and run the code seen on screen. These examples show how Cumulative Power Factory simulates multiple constructors. The first constructor doesn't take arguments, and it allows you to create class instances that compute powers of 2, which is the default value of the exponent argument. 
The total instance attribute holds the cumulative sum of computed powers as you go. The second example shows a constructor that takes exponent as an argument and returns a callable instance that computes cubes. In this case, total works in the same way as the first example. This third example shows how cumulative power factory seems to have another constructor that allows you to create instances by providing the exponent and start arguments. Now total starts with a value of 2205, which initializes the sum of powers. Using optional arguments when you're implementing Dunder init in your classes is a clean and Pythonic technique to create classes that simulate multiple constructors. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at a different approach where you check the argument types to Dunder init.